Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Mortof1, but you can call me Seven. And we are going to be finishing Sucker for Love today, at least I presume, because we have just the last chapter to play. Sucker for Love Chapter 1000, because we managed to get the true endings for chapters 1, 2, and 999. Oh, I understand why that is now. This is the first loop around, this is the second loop around, and then it has been, well, 999 is an arbitrary number. It's been thousands of times that we've gone around in this loop with all of our friends and all of the people and Roxanne. So let's see what the final chapter, I think, has to offer us. Let's get started. Sucker for Love! Chapter 1000. I can't come up with a subtitle off the top of my head. So we're just gonna sit here and stare at the marker. Okay, Stardust, hello. We're here. Hello. Something is very wrong. Did I doze off while reading? My daydreaming always turns into regular dreaming when I do. Is... is this what I was reading? I've gotta get home. I'm sorry for falling asleep in your store, but I've gotta get... I mean, we kind of saw this coming, right? Something like this? I feel like she's some kind of deity anyway, right? The, the book, the book, the odd bookkeeper, storekeeper, something. Someone hung themselves right next to me while I was sleeping? Is that Moo? Did, did Buck get to her? Oh, I feel sick. So, so sick. Did we have her name before? It, I don't feel like we did. The floor slips under my feet and I fall back hard, loudly knocking books to the ground. I assume they're books. I can't see anything. Everything goes black. What? An awful dream. Hey! Hey! No! Wake up, you! Oh! Hello! Oh my gosh! Did I break the human? Stupid! Stupid! <laughs> stupid! 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 Uh, are you, you an alien? <clears throat> How, no. Oh! Oh! I'm a mysterious, sexy librarian type. Look past my aloof and distant nature and follow uh. me. <laughs> Uh, Moo, that's not, it's not really working when you, <clears throat> when you say that you're the mysterious sexy lab. You know what, I'm just gonna, I won't, I won't engage with that. An alien is playing with a corpse in front of me. An alien is playing with a corpse in front of me. This can't be real, I, I must be dreaming still. It's not a dead body, promise. It's just a doll I use. Oh, you yeah, can read my it. thoughts? Hanging it up to dry. Oh, hey, uh, Shogoth. Okay, you know. we love to hear it. Shogoths, huh? Plural. There's more of you just walking around on Earth. We live where all the undiscovered nightmare fuel hangs out. Oh, cool. That's casual. Right the Pacific Ocean. Awesome. Not my fault you guys went to space before hundred percenting your own planet. That's a very, very, very good point. I really can't. I got nothing for you there. We're like a hundred miles from the ocean. What are you even doing all the way in the countryside? Well, one day, I grew tired of the darkness beneath, beneath the, the waves. waves. And upon tentacle and maw, I skulked upon your shore. For one reason. I can't write smut underwater. Okay, well, that's a very good point. What a trivial reason. You know, I think that I would have heard on the news about giant tentacle, tentacle monsters roaming through the country. <laughs> you think so? But I am a <laughs> I, I love Moo. She's great. I think we did get her name before. She's fantastic. She's such a little gremlin. I've studied your culture extensively from the water. Okay. I've mastered every language and can speak them in any accent. I'll go on, voice actor. Check out my cowboy voice. <laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> Whoa, it's like you're a real cowboy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh. To be honest, I only learned to read, speak, and write your languages uh. so I can read your human books. They're far superior to cosmic scriptures. Don't get me started. Oh, sure. Don't get me started on the localization. It depends on who does them, but I get it. But that seems like a lot of effort. My complex motives are far beyond mortal comprehension. You just want to read smut, dude. I thumb idly along the spines of books written in English. They have suggestive titles. You learned every human language just so you could consume all of our smut? Maybe they weren't as complex as I thought. You also make life like human models and learned every language that humans speak? I, I, I have a thing for humans, Oh, okay? this is like a reverse. 
they they okay. I ooh, <laughs> okay, I understand. Looking around the store, a lot of these books are eldritch curios and lore, but some of these books. Big Slippery Shogoth Girlfriends Volume 2. My little night gaunt. Can't be this f wait. For for it. Oh, I don't know what that's supposed to be referencing. Deep ones. <laughs> They're explicit stories about love between human and eldritch entities. I didn't know these kinds of books even existed. Did did she make all of these? And aren't you the one who's been writing my ultra dangerous reality bending ritual books? Nah. Well, I mean, yeah, but I, I just write smutty doge. Smutty doges and such. Sorry, I'm. I'm just having trouble wrapping my mind around that. They seem like two completely dissonant skills. <laughs> yeah, those two hobbies are completely unrelated. What? I raise an inquisitive eyebrow. Wait a minute. Oh, you are the reason that we have been romancing Roxanne. What? So, you make smut books, fantasizing about humans and eldritch gods meeting, and then also make spell books that would allow humans and eldritch gods to meet in real life. So you are manifesting your, your fetish. <laughs> By allowing it to happen in real life. I know what it sounds like, but I can explain. Go, go ahead. I've got nothing. I'm a disaster for human eldritch. You're trash. Is what I'm hearing. Okay. You indirectly summoned reality-ending gods to our realm, just so you could watch them date humans. I'd say I pretty directly summoned them, actually. Jesus Christ. Also, why the heck did you make the rituals so freaking scary? The rituals for an outer god. <laughs> They're all scary. All, all the, time. the time. That's fair. Well, if you're supposed to be helping me, why'd you put the most important ritual at the very end? What? The uprooting ritual? Yes. Rich rituals are serious business. Okay, it's sure. It's not like I've been asleep at the wheel here. I've been changing the book for that's, each time I find that's true. attention yeah. quicker, safer path to uprooting. You've been doing that. But there's only so many options when humans outright can't produce some oh. spells needed for many incantations. Yeah, that makes sense, too. I haven't had a problem so far. Worcestershire sauce. I'm pretty sure you just said that wrong. Where's this? Where's the sure sauce? We're working. We're work is. We're, we're, okay, you, you made your point. All I was trying to say is that it's a cryptographic marvel. Yes, that you can yeah, consistently yeah. Perform these rituals. I like this little peek and behind the curtain. Genius. This is really funny. That's all I'm really Just as a concept. Oh, is that all? Besides, Roxy loves the rituals. She's a god, she, she likes, likes rituals. rituals. And the scarier they are, the faster you fall in love. Oh, uh, this is like toxic. This isn't good. You can't force this upon people. That's not good. <laughs> that's like writing fanfic about. That's like writing fanfic about real people, I think. Because sometimes, or at least a lot of the time on the internet, especially, that can be very bad and wrong. It totally worked. Roxy likes you. Like, oh, she's down bad? I mean, we could kind of tell. Oh, she's got it bad. Yeah. Look at this little gremlin. I love her. Oh, yeah. I'm writing fanfics of the two of you right now. This stuff is hot. Let's see. Tax. Pining. Slow burn. Tax. One-sided. One-sided? It's not one-sided. It's not? Wait, I, I mean, well, ahem. <clears throat> Sorry, she she's 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 really gorgeous and. I ship it. <laughs> oh wait, this is really cute. <laughs> wait, no. Age difference, age difference, mommy. Oh mommy oh. Girl. Whoa 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 whoa. Well, add them both and let the algorithm work its magic. Roxanne, Stardust. Uh. Oh my God, your ship name is Rockstar. No. Or uh, Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she is garbage. She is Tumblr trash! Oh my god! Hey... I, I hate to kill the fun, but a lot of people have gotten really hurt because you made this book. Including me. It was never supposed to be like this. I thought only good things could come from summoning Roxy to your world. Oh. She just wants Earth to be one big happy family. But you and understand what you are. Mother. You're an eldritch being. You, you know what your stuff is like. And she's kind. She's the only one who didn't laugh me out of Astrid's court when I suggested that humans Aww. and eldritch entities belong together. 
In fact, this really is a love story. <laughs> uh, weird and twisted one, but it's Eldritch, so what, an, what, what a surprise. An all-in-one ritual book full of spells that the will make perfect the perfect date. <laughs> Plus an abort button. The uprooting ritual. In case the human needed oh. to be rescued from Roxy, we picked the perfect human together, too. A young, handsome oh. human man who had already spent so much time and money that's not the, trying to contact That's Roxy not the perfect mm -hmm. time and money. Mm. He flew through the rituals, started a huge family in her worship, and grew the thousand to such a size oh. he never really clicked like I had hoped. But he had his god, and Roxanne had her family yeah, at some okay. point. Buck decided to steal a smooch outside of Black Ceremony, completely out of I order see. and without consulting. The ritual instead book. of causing some obscure ritual to fail disastrously, something far worse happened. He accidentally performed a certain ritual perfectly. A kiss of immortality. She told us about it. He tried everything to reverse his immortality. When nothing worked, he went so insane. Many people, so many humans that Roxanne considered her children, turned on her. All these realities later. He's still tormenting her. I don't know if it's revenge or if he's got some other. Yeah, he's immortal. In mind. How do we deal with this? Can but we seal him in some way? What a big fat screw up this was. If Roxy, if all the gods can't find happiness with a human, there's no hope for any of us. I just read the last line. Sorry, that's why I laughed. Between you and me, Roxy is the hottest one in the family by far. So that's why I'm trusting you with my books. I hope it's not too weird to say, but after seeing you time and time again, after seeing you time and time again. Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad the book eventually found its way to me, but it's like a past baton. Every leg of the sprint leading up to me was significant and worthwhile, and I've got to pass it on again. I think I'm okay with that, but I also think I would really like to be the one that gets to cross the finish line, the one who gets to show Roxy how far we ran together. That's really romantic. Okay, that's it. You two are too perfect. Sorry, Roxy, you're gonna kill me for this, but you can't expect me to sit through a thousand Aww. episodes of Stardust dying before you can admit how you feel. Here you go, you crazy kid. It's you crazy kid. Ritual. Do us all a favor and end up together already. <laughs> Wait, that's the same ritual that Buck did. Becoming permanent. This means I'll never die, no matter what, even when reality ends again. Will I end up like Buck? Holding the sinister page fills me with a palpable dread. This ritual is what started all of this. It's what caused Buck to go mad. It's what turned the thousand against Roxanne. It's what made every reality a nightmare. It's what caused me to suffer and perish countless times. But it's also what brought me to Roxanne. I think this is it. I think it's the key to ending all of this for good. It's how I can stop Buck and the nightmares. Oh? Fighting fire with fire? Perhaps. Not exactly. Once I cast this, my fate will be the same as Buck's. There's no takebacks. But I have the heart to live with what I'm given. No takebacks needed. I'm ready to accept what great highs and lows eternity has in store for me. That is immeasurable strength of will. Because immortality, uh, we've talked about this. I've said this in this series before. Immortality is the, one of the greatest curses you could bestow upon somebody. I don't care what you think. It's not. It's never as good as it seems. Never. Seriously. If you give love, it comes back. If I embrace eternity, eternity will embrace me. Hey, I, I guess if you approach it with that mindset. All right. Now I'm really pumped. No more baton passing. I'm going. Are you coming too? No way, Jose. Look scary. No, looking. I'd love to have you help. Um. Yeah, yeah. I know that I'm scary too. But I can't just run into the unknown like humans can. Aww. Shabbats are brave like you are. I'm the only one that even, even left, left the, the sea? sea for crying out loud. Don't worry, you don't have to come. I have your book. That's all I've needed so far, and that's all I'll need now. Go get him, Stardust. <laughs> no sign of anybody except the lone flower. Oh, it's lagging. There we go. This could be the end of my life as a mortal, couldn't it? All in all, I have to say it's been a blast. And whatever's ahead, I know there will be something to love. All right. Well, <clears throat> Stardust, if this is what you want, then I will help you make it happen. You seem committed. You know what you're getting into. 
Let's do it. Kiss of Immortality. To perform a kiss of immortality, simply kiss Roxanne Selva Oscura in the presence of a greater rot bloom. If there is no greater rot bloom present, stand in a room with Roxanne and at least 1,000 rot bloom flowers. Draw this symbol and chant. Is that literally a 69? I hate it here. <laughs> the flower will bloom within seven minutes. Eternal life awaits you. Make the most of it. Appendix M. This section of the book has been compiled from the deaths of your past lives in order to ensure your current incarnation survives as long as possible. Your suffering in this place has earned you this advantage, so adhere to the instructions precisely. Cloud of Flush Flies. If you hear a loud buzzing or a sudden swarm of flying insects, flee. Now, move quickly and deliberately away from the room you spotted the bugs until you can no longer see a single fly. The flies will not follow far, but be wary. Once they've caught your scent, there will likely be another feeding frenzy within minutes. You aren't fleeing the flies. You're fleeing from what they're coming from. Okay, got it. Tempestuous murder. Check windows frequently. In the event of seeing the flock of crow-like creatures outside, immediately flee to an interior room without windows open or closed. They are not crows. Their arrival will be silent, but their number's great. Once you hear loud flapping of wings, they have stopped circling. It is safe to come out. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is run away from flies as fast as possible. They won't follow you far. I have to go and uh, go away from the room I spotted the bugs until I can no longer see one. I have to check windows frequently and then flee to an interior room without windows open or closed. Hush of the deep woods. If all sound has been stolen, panic loudly. Loud noises are your only salvation. Keep a running clock in your head. At least once every 15 seconds, create a loud noise. It does not matter what it is, only that it is loud. Do this for a full minute, so four times. The hush hungers for your silence. Starve it. Okay. Jesus Christ. Summon Ultra Predator. Whew. If you feel a sudden sense of dread and your heart begins to race, it is your natural prey instinct. Hide in a room with only one entrance and no open windows. Once inside, face the only way in. Do not look away. Waiting is the worst part, but stay strong. It will never attack you from the front. Once the dread subsides, it has likely sought prey elsewhere or and found a better hiding spot. Stygian Canopy. If your vision is darkening or you catch glimpses of trees where they shouldn't be, the Black Woods are forcing night upon all living things within it. This includes nocturnal predators. Find any lit candles and stare directly at them. The trees will retreat from its glow. Do not look away. The song of morning birds tripping means you've survived the artificial night. Oh my god, there's so many things. How the hell am I supposed to remember all this shit? Call of the seventh knock. Listen carefully for the direction of the knocking. Move slowly towards the sound. I'm gonna need to turn my volume up for this. If another sound distracts you, do not follow it. The knocking is your only guide. Pull the door open in one swift motion once the seventh knock begins. Do not hesitate. Your timing must be perfect. If the sixth knock comes before you find the source, stay perfectly still. Do not even breathe. It may pass you by. That sounds really hard. So I have to move slowly towards the sound of the knocking. And I have to move slowly enough so that I get there uh, after the sixth knock, but before the seventh knock, once it begins. And then pull it open in one swift motion. Oh my god, death of death. If you notice corpses rising from the fields of Roblin flowers, the second floor balcony is your only sanctuary. It is the only room you've never died in. Your deaths have given new life and they are hungry to trade their fate for yours. They will not last long in this world and will starve quickly. Wait it out. Be warned, there may be stragglers. Spiteful dwelling. If the walls and floors begin creaking loudly, the house itself has been given life by the volumes of immortal blood spilled within and soaked into the foundation. Exit before you are crushed. The staircases are not safe. Do not use them. If you are upstairs, you must leave through a window. Do not use doors that move on their own. They are mouths. Oh my God. So, okay. Fumigating miasma, or miasma. A thick mist will fill the lower levels of the house. Seek higher ground immediately. Stand near any open window on the top floor. The spores will work fast. Dizziness and nausea will overtake you within seconds of exposure. Megafauna, homin- Okay, there are two more. Oh, I hate this. Oh, no, not the- God, I hate these! No, what are they called? Alternates! Oh, I hate them so much! 
th these are actual nightmare fuel for me. I really hate these things from uh, their um, analog horror. These guys suck. I hate these guys. I stalk silently and seemingly at random on impossible, impossible on impossibly elongated limbs. Avoid being in a room with it for too long. Upon seeing it, you will be compelled to scream yourself to death. Note, it does not appear hostile, but you have died many times because because of it all the same. Summon firstborns. If you hear the loud cry of a baby, flee to the heart of the woods. Do not emerge until the candles blow out on their own. Be observant. Jesus Christ. So I just gotta get away from the, the, the alternate. Seek higher ground, stay, get away from the mist. Don't use windows or, or staircases. Bodies rising from the rot blooms. That means that I need to get to the second floor balcony because it's the only place I haven't died. Knocking, okay, I have to listen. I'm gonna have to focus. Jeez, I lit candles and stared directly at them. Trees where they shouldn't be. Okay, got it. Oh god, okay. Natural prey instinct. Hide in a room with only one entrance and no open windows. Where is that? Where is a room with one entrance and no open windows? I guess it would be my brother's bedroom? We also still haven't been to our parents' room, so we don't know what's in there. If all sound has been stolen... Again, I'm gonna have to turn up my volume a little bit. Panic. Loudly. 15 seconds. Every 15 seconds. Got it. Check windows frequently. Loud buzzing. Okay. Got it. So first, I need to get up there. Well, this sucks. And I don't really... Game lagged a little bit. I was really worried there for a second that I just already died. Roxanne, Selva Oscura. Sorry it took me a while to start dreaming this time. I was too anxious to fall asleep. It's okay. You're still wearing your clothes. So, this is it? Yes. Buck is the only remaining member of the thousand. Correct. Are you ready for what's to come? No. It's only hitting me just now that this kiss of immortality thing... Isn't it kind of like asking to marry her? Promising to be with her forever, sealed with a kiss, no takebacks... Holding this book feels like fumbling with with an engagement ring in my pocket. Stardust, are you all right? I'm okay. Oh yeah, I'm fine. Um, nervous. <laughs> you don't even know. The butterflies in my stomach are building to the point of unbearability. Just as I'm about to swallow them down, a breeze blows into my room, carrying a foul stench that fills my lungs. I fall over, retching. My eyes sting in water uncontrollably, and I have to actively fight the urge to hurl. Did something die? Something didn't. I see. I can sense him. Okay. You've got the book. I've got the book. Got it. Now or never. I prop myself up on one knee and open the book to the kiss of her mortality ritual, revealing it to her. <laughs> you don't have to kneel to me for my ritual. Yeah. Where did you get that? No. I thought I had something to say, plan, but my mind is completely blank with nerves. Say something, anything. R R Roxy, I. I only exist because you dream about me. Without you, there would be no me. And when I look back on my life and all the things that I got to see and do, it'd take me forever to say thank you. So, I will. Buck's inside the house. I've got to get going. Think about it, okay? I'm going to get started on it, but I won't finish it on, uh, if you don't say yes, okay? Finally, here we go. One versus one. I've got only one ritual to get through. Let's do this. Okay. Stand in room. Okay. Uh, yeah, draw this symbol. And then. Wait, where is she? Can I just chant? Can I. Survive? Oh, for Christ's sake. Shit. I've got seven minutes to survive. Seven minutes. Simply seven minutes. Okay. This is fine, guys. We can do this. I'm just gonna go over here, go into the bathroom, chill out for a little bit. This is the only place I haven't died. Oh, I should check the windows frequently, right? See if there are any crows outside. Uh, this all looks normal to me. Lots of stars. Oh, 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 we gotta get away. Until I don't see any flies anymore. Shit, 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 shit. Okay. Okay. 
It won't follow me far, it says. Please stop with the buzzing. Jesus Christ, I just shouldn't look around. Jesus, come on, man! Let me out! There's so many things in the book to keep track of. I haven't seen anything else besides the flies as of yet. Again, apparently they won't follow me far. This has all been very romantic and very sweet in the most truly fucked up and crazy way. I'm gonna be completely real with you. Okay. Nothing on the windows. Oh shit! Uh, that means I need to... Yeah, okay. They're not crows. So once I hear loud flapping of wings... I'm good. Is my vision darkening? Ah, shit! I need to go stare into, into candles. Okay. How do I get up? How do I get up? Okay. Keeps the trees at bay. Right? I don't know what this squeaking sound is. Oh, shit! What do I do with the firstborns? I don't know what to do. Oh, flee to the heart of the woods. Shit. 148. I better go. I better go. Shit. We gotta go. I know, I know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Made it! Okay. Now I just- Was that the knocking? I have to wait until the candles snuff themselves out, right? Oh! Thirty seconds! Um! Um! Twenty-three! Twenty? Come on, come on, come on, please don't make me do this again. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Whoo! Okay. That wasn't too awful. I feel like there could be like, a, you know, like a Five Nights at Freddy's, like, uh, like, a, what is it called? 50-50 mode? Shoot, what is it? Oh, I can't remember. The challenge mode. I feel like you could do that and just turn, crank all these up to 11 and try and figure out how to survive. I just need to get back. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right, all right, all right, we're going. What are you doing with my fiance? Let me in! Hey, lovebird. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are you doing to her? Scaring her awake. Now that you're here. Easier. Oh, Jesus Christ. I want to be so angry. But I can't be angrier than I am frustrated and confused. Why? Why would you do this? Tormenting us isn't going to change a thing. Why can't you just face the reality that you are immortal already? The reality is that I'm immortal. I couldn't care less. If the eternal sleeper wakes up, the end. Immortality or not. I vaguely remember reading something about that in Moose Library. Once a god that dreams all of the other gods into existence Wait, wait, wait. Once- oh, oh, oh. I vaguely remember reading something about that in Moose Library once. A god that dreams all the other gods into existence, and by extension, all of their realities. Wait. That means- y you're talking about ending everything? Everything, everything? How is torturing Roxanne supposed to do that? Why are you punishing her? To make her scream loud enough that the sleeper hears it. If she doesn't, Maybe another god will. Any god that learns that I exist will start having nightmares too. Once I'm in their head, it's sheet clutching nightmares forever. Jesus Christ. I'll never stop. I only need one screamer. I'll find them eventually. I'm human. The ultimate persistence predator. I mean, he's not wrong. The indomitable human spirit. Derogatory. And you would have gotten away with it too. Ah! For this meddling cat. Hi, Auntie Nyan Nyan. <laughs> Hello, handsome. Hello. Oh, 
Auntie Nyan Nyan? Threatening to terrorize my very sisters and granddaughters the way you so tortured <laughs> my niece? <laughs> I respect that. I respect my that. My silly flock of hands could use a good browbeating. But trying to speak to the eternal sleeper? Ah. That is the duty of a god. Not a human playing pretend. <laughs> I will articulate to you the difference. What a lucky break. I can complete the kiss. Wait a minute. If Auntie Nian Yen drags Buck into her dream, she's going to start getting nightmares too. Buck's going to end up in the mind of the god who talks directly to the eternal sleeper. That's exactly what he wants. Oh, no. Good. He's free. It's now or never. I've never had a bad dream in my life. But I've, I have had dreams so wonderful that it woke me up right at the best part. Okay. Oh, thank God I reacted fast enough. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I only registered that I was supposed to spray her with water. And if I become immortal, I'll survive through her waking up, uh, through her waking up this time. Roxanne, I don't have the time to say it now, but, w but will when I have forever to say it. Oh. You've already said it. Time after time. I love you too. So, y you're. Oh, oh gosh! I can just, I can just make them kiss again. <laughs> well, oh no, no, they just do it. <laughs> well, was that a second kiss of immortality? <laughs> no, just a regular one. Okay. Stardust. Since I met you, I wondered how I could be so lucky. How you could have appeared so suddenly, like a bright star in the darkest sky. I think it's because, despite everything, I never stopped believing in good. That someone like you had to exist somewhere. Aww. And you did. You are the good that I knew had to exist somewhere in this infinite cosmos. Stardust. You're the Aww. most wonderful thing I could have ever dreamed up. <gasps> oh. Roxanne. Thank you, my twinkling stardust. Grand Grandma, you're crying. Oh, hey, Lynetta. That you're from, you're from the first game. No, Do you want to hear about it? What? But you never want to talk about your dreams. I had my reasons. I didn't want to fill your head with fear of humans. Oh. Now, I can tell you about love. Love. Oh, she. I never played like the like the ones with the other with the other gals. So this must be a prequel then, because they're children. Here, time is screwy with this. Hard to believe, I know, but I believe in time. You just might come to love them too. <laughs> oh, keep it down, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Is it just the two of us? Just the two of us. Oh, you know, out of every stardust I've met, you've been the biggest pain in my ass. Sorry. Are you gonna talk normal? I'm gonna keep my hands off the mouse now. Just so, so are we just, where are we? Space between dreams. Get comfortable. <laughs> Damn. Maybe we could become friends. Who knows? Are you gonna try to kill me? You wish. We just get to sit here and stare at each other until the next dream starts. Damn. Wow, this is kind of interesting. So, I mean, I'd go mad, too, if this is what it was like. I'll get the bookmaker. Or I'll get caught by Nyanlithotep. Or I'll go back to my original plan. Okay. You can't do any of that now. I'm here, and I'm not going away ever again. Damn, an eternal struggle. Only thing more persistent than a human is uh, another you human. you even know what you're in for? Infinite, cruel, eternity. Ah, Roxy loves me, though. I think in a truly infinite cosmos, you find exactly what you're looking for. Eventually. Oh! I might have accidentally double-clicked. Sorry, guys. 
You looked for cruelty in a cosmos of infinite volume and found it in no, sh in no short supply. But you know what, Buck? When the dream starts again, I'm going to run barefoot through the grass. I'm going to watch scary movies. I'm going to love, be joyous, move, learn, cry, and feel so much that all of the bad is worth it. That's what I did when I was mortal. That's what I'll do now. That'll end. The clock is ticking on how long you'll still be able to experience any of those things. The clock was always ticking, Buck. And when it runs out ashes to ashes, stardust to stardust. But there's things out there worth seeing before that happens. Things that make it all worthwhile. I swear it. You know what? Come on. Where are you taking me? This void is infinite, right? And I bet there's an infinite number of things that make life worthwhile too. Even out here. It's not being when you see it. Stardust. Oh, Do I get to move at all? No. Ah, oh, they're just doing their thing. Man. There we go. Dedicated to my brilliant wife, Caroline Hunter. You make me a real sucker for love. Created by Akabaka. Oh, it's got words! Oh man, that was really fun! What an enjoyable game! Oh, that was good for so many reasons! The actual story was goofy and like, you know, all the bits, all the comedy, all the little uh, like references to other things like outside media. The voice acting was really good. And it was just, it's just a really sweet story. It's romantic. The cosmos are inherently romantic. The stars, space, I mean, it's horrifying, yes, and it's infinite vastness, but also, I mean, there's a reason that we as humans love the stars. We look to the sky, we try to go, you know, we want to tra travel throughout our galaxy. We have so much fiction written about it. It's sweet. And this is sweet because Stardust has dedicated herself I mean, again, immortality, it's a, it's a curse, but she's making the most of it. Only a human could really view this that way and, you know, have this kind of attitude about a life like this. Even trying to help the one person who was doing the most evil. It's very her. Stardust, what a lovely main character. She's so sweet. Oh, uh, can I just like stop it? Like be like, oh, if I see something that makes life worthwhile. Stop. Did you, did you find something St with Stardust? I'm speechless, and I'm not any closer to seeing it all. Oh, looks like a new dream is finally starting. Ready to go duke it out again? Maybe later. I think I prefer to stay out here. It's peaceful. It'll take me a while to see everything. Thank you. Oh, Buck. Roxanne. I can't wait to see what you've dreamt up now. Whoa. Oh, it's it's my room. And I've still got my heart and my trusty plant, mister. I also love the look of this game. The, the art and the aesthetic has just all been phenomenal. And the fact that it's a TV show or it's a, v, it's a VHS anyway. So nice. Oh, can we finally go into our parents' room? Oh. Oh, oh God, Nanny. Oh, you scared the shit out of me. Hey. Ah! I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Yeah, it's good to see you. Annie, how many times have we ambushed her? Oh, of course she'd be jumpy. Hey, oh, they're all back! Yeah! Hooray! Steven, you were right. They're all back. I said I was sorry. 
I couldn't think of anything better to shout while I jumped out. Oh. Why did you have to jump out at all? That's a good question. Nanny, Billy, kid, you're all here. And none of them have the stair? Like, of course, silly. Where else would we be? It's not like we can just leave the woods. Oh, but man. now that they've pretty much covered the whole planet, we can go everywhere. I can finally go shopping in Paris. I do. Is, is something up with the voice acting here? Because I don't know if that's just me, though. And I'll be able to go on a world tour. She sounds tour. muffled. My fans will love it. And oh, Billy, <laughs> you simply must come with me on tour. Uh... I'll need a bodyguard. And you're perfect for the role. I'd rather eat my shoe. Fair. Hey, stop being cranky. Mm, stop being cranky. Sorry. I didn't get enough violence out of my system before peace broke out. We can fight if you want. Oh, yeah. You should see outside, Stardust. Everything's different. Oh. It's a whole new world waiting to be re-explored. No reason to ever come back to this old place. Ugh. Can we please get out of here already? The wallpaper's peeling, the floorboards are rotting, and I'm pretty sure I just huh. saw a rat the size of a chihuahua run by. This is her childhood home. Thank you, Billy. I was gonna say oh. that. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, uh, nice. It's nice. Wait, wait, wait. You knew that she lived here? I spent forever trying to figure that out. <laughs> What's your one rep max on bench press? Destroyed. Guys, if it's all the same, I might take a moment to say goodbye to this place. I'll be outside in a sec. <sighs> no worries. The rest of your family already got their chance to pack up and say their goodbyes. My family? My family's oh, here yeah. too? They're totes outside. You're oh. really hitting it off with Roxanne. Color me shocked. Who could have possibly expected that a goddess of fertility and a married couple with ten kids would get along? Jesus Christ, I mean, that's fair. Sheesh. But, like I said, no rush. Especially if you grandkids, take all the yeah. Time you need. We'll wait for you. Thanks, Billy. The trio steps out into the daylight, leaving me to what will likely be my last goodbyes to this house. A bell jingling. Oh wait. A butterfly caught in a web. Still there. That meant to signify that we're still in the dream. Well then, let's. Jingling gets louder. Let's go check out all the rooms in the house. Oh, wait, what the fuck? You are Buck's replacement. You can be replaced too. Do you want to make the same mistake? Oh, is it back to the heart of the house? Why are you following him? Everyone is waiting for you. What do you think you're doing, Stardust? Well now. Aren't you just full of surprises? When you first stumbled into these woods, cheeks wet with tears of rage, your only desire was to see these twisted trees burn. Did I make a mistake? For a moment, I thought you'd forgotten your quest so easily, in exchange for a flutter of lashes and a flash of thigh. It seems I may have misjudged your resolve. A mistake I do not often make. Those seeking to destroy the Black Woods inevitably oh. become compelled to worship it. That oh my god! That version of this contemptible book. Will you prove them liars and burn them down in a fit of mortal defiance? Or will you prove them right and spend your immortal days simpering at my niece's cloven hooves like a love-struck fool in the very Eden you swore to, to raise, raise to ash? The agony of indecision suits you, little matchstick. Though I do hope you choose to burn it all down. I've never cared for happy endings. Or goodbyes, for that matter. <laughs> Ta-ta. Oh, no. So on the one hand, yes, her resolve was... What the hell? Noises? Anyway, her resolve was to come here and burn down the Black Woods, save her family, and stop people from getting hurt. In the process, after thousands upon thousands of lives, doing the same thing over and over again, and getting closer to Roxanne, and getting to know her, I don't know. They're eldritch deities. They're eldritch beings. Ah, They're like... I don't- I, I, there are things that we just cannot comprehend. They're supposed to be horrors from beyond the space and stars. 
from the outer worlds and like I don't know how we're supposed to be able to conceptualize their personalities and their intentions and like who they are like their morality Roxanne seems or sorry uh I think Auntie Nyan Nyan just wants to be a be a bastard just be a real mean person to her granddaughter wait no niece niece because she sort of is just like god I don't know I don't know what really is in the spirit of what Stardust would do. I don't know if going into this dream and living out immortality with the person that we seem to have come to love and know is a bad thing. Again, immortality, I've never been a fan of it as, you know, it's not good. It, it, it always leads to, well, stuff like this, like Buck. But like, I don't know. I'm a sucker for the love story, and, and, and it's really romantic and very sweet. I thought the ending was very cute and lovely, but I don't know. This is giving myself over, isn't it? To the eldritch uh, deity that I seem to have sworn myself to, Stardust has, and, th and being like, yeah, uh... Humanity can get bent. I want to live like this now. Because this is all just in Roxanne's dream. I'm going to make my choice. You guys are free to, th to think of what you want. I will go back to see the other choice, but that will, that, what you guys don't see in my video will be up to you guys to see yourselves. All right, guys, I've made my choice. We are not going to burn down the Black Woods. Even though it was foretold in the book over and over again that anybody who comes to worship or comes to these woods ends up worshiping them. In a way, that is exactly what happened with Roxanne and Stardust. Yes, it may have seemed, or seemed organic. And yes, Ro Stardust did exercise her own free will, though at this point that concept is so muddy in the context of this game that... It feels a little silly to say it. Auntie Nyan Nyan seems to thrive on the conflict. She wants us to betray Roxanne. She wants us to hurt her and prove to her, I think, that humans and eldritch beings can't get along. And then comes the issue of whether or not we do become, like, you know, we're a Buck's replacement. Does that mean that someone can replace us? Are we going to grow to be as awful as he is? I mean, immortality is an incredibly long time. Some might say eternal. So will somebody come along and will the cycle just continue? Will she continue getting hurt or is this... Because I think Roxanne's intentions are genuinely fairly good. Like she doesn't want people to get hurt, but also like this is kind of how she is. This is just sort of the makeup of her being. But I decided to just go with it, with the sweet dream, which I would never ever normally do, especially considering the Honkai Star Rail story I just played. But this is just, it's in a different context. She can finally have a dream that is sweet and nice and good. It's no longer a nightmare. I can't bring myself to take that away from her. I think that that's unfair. I have to believe in Stardust as a human, as a person. So that, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that, that's what I've got. I know that this means that there are going to be two separate, like, real, like, true endings. And they're probably going to be labeled as such, but we will have to see, so... Go outside, shall we? Thanks for playing. Oh. Welcome to the Green Woods. Thanks for playing. So we got all the homies in cultist clothes. There's us wearing cultist clothes, and Roxanne is talking to our parents. Oh, that's Moo? Um, I don't know if that's Moo necessarily. Pen back over though, I want to see everyone. So we've got also our family members on the roof. There are the homies. Someone's lying on the ground with a cultist there. Who are you? In the clothing and the blonde hair, who are you? I don't know if you're a fa just another family member. For love. Date. And that's it? All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I definitely did. Uh, I'm pretty happy with my decision. I want to know what you guys think. I feel like this could be there could be so much room for debate here. 
it's funny this game is so goofy and yet it really made me think about a lot of things actually and it forced a hard decision upon me very very enjoyable very enjoyable akabaka thank you for creating this game it is lovely you did a wonderful job I had a, such a good time, I can't wait to see if there are going to be any others, or if there's going to be uh, other work from you. So anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video. For now, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Bye!